I'm really surprised to be saying this. I think the yield max funds might be getting too much hate. Today I'm going to talk about one of the weekly paying yield max funds, YMAX, because I've done a video on it a while ago before it was paying weekly. But since it switched to paying weekly, these funds might be something you want to look at. So we're going to talk about investing $10,000 into this fund. We're going to track the dividends since switching to weeklies. Uh, we're going to look at the drip calculation and basically see what this fund is all about because it's really, really important to know what we're investing in. Now, I'm not saying that I would invest in this. I do have it in the $800 account where I bought all of the weekly dividend ETFs. If you want to see how that's going, I'll link it down below and at the end of the video. But for now, let's talk about YMAX and see, is this an actual good option for a high income ETF that will pay you every single week? Let's roll the intro. If you guys have watched my videos prior, you know I'm not the biggest fan of yield max ETFs because of one thing, nav erosion. And when it comes to nav erosion, I think it it just makes it really complicated and difficult to figure out what you're going to make from a fund, right? We can look at the track history of these dividend stocks or ETFs that have been around around for a long time and kind of get an idea of how they perform, but the yield max funds are very very new. And so some of them have suffered crazy nav erosion and some really haven't. And so YMAX is a fund of funds. It's a grouping of their option income ETFs. Currently, they're saying it, it has a distribution rate of 68%, which is paid out weekly. 68% um, is the annual return. It's paid weekly, though, just so you know. There's a difference there. You're not getting 60% every week. Now, going down, I want to look at what they are invested in. We're going to talk about the actual yield. I did calculate it, and it's not too far off, but we'll talk about that in the dividend section. But what we're looking at now is what this fund owns. So we can see Tesla is their first at 4.55%. And you have the Microsoft fund. And then you have TSM. And then you have PayPal, Moderna, um, the innovation option, which I think is the ARK one. And then you have JPM, you have Google, you have NVIDIA. So they're, they, it's just a, a big mixing of a lot of their funds. So if you think that in the long term, the funds will at least trade sideways and yield nicely, this one might be a good bet for you. The other thing is owning all of them gives you some risk mitigation because we have seen some funds like MSTY and NVDY do extremely well and some like TSLY not do so well. So if you own a little bit of all of them and they fluctuate like we've seen them do, it might be a better option. And that's why I think this fund might be a little bit overlooked as well as YMAG. YMAG is my preferred one because it's safer in my opinion. But still, so YMAX, you own a bunch of these funds. It's a way of owning a lot of the yield max pieces without having to buy them individually. And the yield has been pretty insane. Plus, you have a lot more investing capabilities because it pays weekly. And people are really shifting over to the weekly ETFs, at least what I've seen on the channel and what people have commented. So let me know what you guys think. Are you buying the normal yield max funds or are you buying the weekly yield max funds? Because for me, I would definitely be more interested in the weekly payers both from a safety standpoint and from a just making money every single week. Um, so I'm curious what you guys think. Let me know in the comments down below, but let's check out the distribution history of this fund and then we'll throw in my calculation of what I found as well. I'm really going to focus in on when they switched to the weekly payments. Now, before the price action was pretty rough, we can even see it right here. They fell from 21, almost $22 down to 17. Um, and then have been roughly trading sideways since the switch. So the first weekly payment came in September on the 18th. So if we pull up the chart here, we can go all the way to September 18th. And it started to bounce back a little bit prior to that because people were hearing that they were switching to weeklies. So I'm going to do the 18th, but it was bouncing up a little bit before then. But since then, it is only down, what, 1.36%. And so what? It's been a little over a month. You probably wouldn't see an insane amount of nav erosion in just one month. But I do want to note that that is important. We haven't seen it dropping like it was beforehand. Especially we would see it drop every time the dividend was paid out. So the nav erosion factor, it still probably is something we'll all be watching closely. But I'm glad that we haven't seen it significantly drop. Try and make it back up to the previous dividend price and then drop again like we have seen over and over and over again with other funds. And they're just not able to keep up. Looking at the dividends. So I already have the calculation done. But since switching to weekly, they've paid out, what, six dividends? And so let me pull it up. And so what I calculated out was, if we go to the history... We can see I took the amount of dividends, I added them all together, and then I divided by six to get an average. 
And so the average dividend payment is 20.9 cents. I multiplied that by 52 because there's a little over 52 weeks in a year. And then I took that number and I divided it by the current price of YMAX, which is 17.36 dollars. And that gave us an amount of 0.628, which I multiplied by 100 to get a percentage. And I had 62.8, 62.9%, which is good. They're saying 68%. I'm saying 63 roughly. So not too far off. And that isn't just based off the last dividend being super high. It is not even the highest we've seen since it paid weekly. But that is something that I think is really important to note. The dividend hasn't, hasn't been struggling. We maybe had one week that was a little bit lower. But the dividend is even higher than it was before they switched to weeklies. And I don't know if this is due to an influx of cash. If this is due to their, like, let's see, what's what's the AUM? How much has that gone up? Um, I'm always curious to see the assets under management. That's what AUM is. Um, net assets, $326 million. I didn't check this one much prior to it switching. But I do, uh, I'm curious to see how it continues on. I do have it also in the other account that I was already talking about, the other playlist on all the weekly dividend ETFs. So I'm tracking it there to see if they, if it just continues to grow. Um, but the dividend, I'm happy with it. This really, it really surprised me actually looking at this one because I didn't think that YMAX would be one that I was interested in because I'm not a huge fan of the yield max funds. But it's kind of proven me wrong so far. So let's throw it into a drip calculator. This is going to be interesting to see. So let's go ahead and slide right over there. So you guys probably know dividendchannel.com is my favorite drip calculator. We're going to take it all the way back to the inception of the fund, which is not 1995. Um, but let's take a look at this. So we can see the inception of the fund was 1-17-2024. So we haven't even had this fund for a year. Uh, the switching to, let's see, you're going to be difficult to gauge. But the, the switching to weeklies was roughly around this point, I think. And so it has taken off a bit since then because it was, what, a month ago? So I am happy to see that. We've seen a total return of 17.06% and an annualized gain of 22.16% since that point. Now, it's going to be difficult to tell. I'm going to run two calculations for the $10,000 invested. We're going to do based off this annualized gain, and then we're going to do it based off of the actual dividend yield that I calculated. So... We'll do two. This one's probably a little bit more realistic, but it's hard to tell because the switching to weeklies really changed how these funds work. Now we can see with dividends reinvested, you're getting an annual return of 22.16. With dividends not reinvested, 20.64. And this is also really interesting because I've seen a lot of people saying reinvesting in the weekly payers is not a good idea because of the NAV erosion. You should put your money in, get a high yield, and take your money out when you're ready and just live off of those dividends. Now, I'm not doing that personally because I'm trying to grow my portfolio. I'm not living off any of the cash. But all in all, I was surprised to see this have such a solid return. And I was even surprised when I did the initial video on the other challenge because the YMAG as well, they both had pretty solid returns. And I think that they are definitely overlooked compared to some of the crazy returns from the other yield max funds like MSTY and NVDY. So let's go ahead and look at our dividend reinvestment calculator and see exactly how much money we'd make with $10,000 invested into yield maxes YMAX fund back over on marketbeat.com using their dividend calculator. I really do like this one. So we have $10,000 plugged in. It adds up to 576 shares at this current price of 1736. Now the thing with this calculation, I'm, I'm assuming a lot because I'm taking out any annual contributions, no tax rates, because I invest without taxes uh, in a Roth account. And then I'm also not including price increase or decrease. So we did see it decrease 1.5% since switching to the weeklies. And over the last year, I think it's down 12% or the last eight months. So that would be a huge factor. So it would likely be lower than this. This is an optimal um, assumption that I'm doing. This is probably the highest chance like, like the highest you could get out of this would be this one I'm, I'm not sure it could do better but it will most likely do worse this is probably a best case scenario so after one year you have ten thousand dollars invested you're at twelve thousand four hundred and seventy four dollars as your ending balance your annual dividend income is three thousand dollars which is phenomenal so this is with our the, this is the return that they had on the drip calculator of 12.16 percent now again if you sorry 22 if you lost 12 percent that would make this a 10% return, which would not be nearly as good. But this is the optimal reaction, um, optimal equation, I should say. At five years invested, your ending balance is $30,000. So at five years, you have made a, an insane return. Your annual dividend income is now $7,400, almost $7,500. 
this is a 200% return in five years because you're growing 20% a year and you're compounding and we have drip on very, very important. We have drip on. So really, really solid. Um, we're going to jump all the way up to 10 years. If you bought and held this for 10 years with all these key things remaining the same, your $10,000 would be $91,000 for a total return of 812%. And now your annual dividend income is $22,600. And the total money you've made over dividends is 72, almost $73,000, which is insane in 10 years, but with no nav erosion. The thing is nav erosion can be a killer. Now, 20 years, this is going to be quite a jump, but we compound. It is truly amazing. Wow. From night, what? 91,000 to $833,000 with an average return of 24.75%. Your annual dividend income is now $206,000 a year. You are now making significantly more than the average American household from just one investment you made 20 years ago. Now, the thing is, is I know that these are crazy and far out. People do this. I've known people that did. I have family members. My, my grandfather was an investor um, in real estate and he invested in a retirement home. And it literally, I think he made every single year triple what his initial investment was from like 15 years prior. So it is possible that was real estate, not the stock market. My father um, has made some really good investments in the stock market as well. It's, an, it's why I got into stock, stock market investing myself. He's an accountant and he has made some insane returns. He has one investment into a bank that he actually, in, he makes in dividends every year, his initial payment, which is crazy. So it, it is possible. I'm not saying this one will do that, but I'm saying that there, it, it is definitely possible. Let me know if you know any one of those stories or if you have one yourself. I always love hearing of success stories from people, um, especially from our community, because you guys are, are phenomenal. So 20 years, I'm going to jump it up to 30 years. Let's say you are 25 years old. You want to retire at 55. You invest $10,000 into WiMAX. It continually trades sideways and you get that annual dividend of 22.16% where you are compounding every single week, which makes a huge difference, especially over the lifetime of 30 years. People have argued against that. It makes a difference. Trust me, the numbers, it makes a big difference. 30 years, you end up with $7.6 million, which is just insane. Your annual dividend income is now $1.8 million and your total dividend payments over the last 30 years are $7 million. Your price, yeah, that's just, it's absolutely insane. Absolutely insane for 20% for returns consistently, which again, it probably won't do, but still, I love that. This has opened my eyes more to the possibilities of YMAX. Now let's throw in my actual yield, which is, this is going to change things. It's going to make it a, it's going to make it crazy. Let's go ahead and do it. So I've added in the yield that I calculated. I remember we ended with what? Seven, seven million dollars off of our $10,000 investment. This is going to be insane. So this is, this is so speculative based off of six weeks of trading, six dividends total that we've seen zero nav erosion, or I guess 1.5% nav erosion that we're not including um, because I don't, I don't know how to predict it. I don't know if it's going to continue to be 1.5%. But still, this is this is the most insane case. And we have seen some yield max funds perform well, but they haven't performed well for a long time span. So this is more for fun. Um, so we can see our initial balance is still the same of the 700 or 576 shares. And we now have a 62% return. So after just one year, you now are you've already made <laughs> you're now returning $16,000 in dividends every single year. Our ending balance is is $18,600. Um, off of that 10,000 investment. And we've made $6,000 in dividends so far, which is crazy. Now let's go. We'll jump right back up. We're going to go to five years. This is why people don't believe in these funds. And I, I have to say, I, I was, I can't disagree with them. After five years, your $10,000 is now 2,200, um, sorry, 226,000 $719. And your annual dividend income is $200,000 a year which is crazy. 10 years. It's only going to get, it's only going to go downhill from here. $5 million in 10 years at a 51,000% return. Annual dividend income is now $4.4 .4 million and you've made, oh my gosh, $3.7 million in dividends. We're going to go to 20 just to see what happens. At 20, yeah, we're going to start losing our ability to even add these numbers up. Your portfolio balance, you have a 20, is that 26, 
million percent return? What? Yeah, and you're in the billions, 2.6 billion, and you're making one. You've you've made 1.9 billion so far, and now your annual dividend income is 2.3 billion. I'm gonna go to 30. The numbers are gonna go all over the screen, but we'll do it. Yeah, million billion trillion, 1.4 trillion dollars. So I mean, that's a pretty good return. I've seen some guys that can, you know, get a better return than 1.4 trillion. That's just me. I mean, the percentage return is only 13 billion percent return. You know, you know, I, I don't know. Not great. I could probably outdo that. That's how some people talk on these apps. I swear it's so stupid. Um, I was joking if you guys didn't pick that up. But total, you're, you're, it's insane. So it doesn't even matter. It's not going to happen. I'll say that. It's not going to happen. Um, the 20% return one is is significantly more possible, but you do end up with a lot more money in this one. So it is fun to add it up. And I'm curious if the dividend goes down. This is all just to show you guys that the weekly dividends have been consistent and they have been high. And I think that's really, really important to note. If it continues to trade like that, even if we do see a year over year drop of 20%, you're still averaging a 40% return plus. So that's something that I want everyone to know. Let me know what you guys think about this fund in the comments down below. I appreciate you guys for being here and for being part of the community and talking with me about this stuff. It's so much fun having friends that I can just talk stocks with because it's hard to come by. So I appreciate you guys. If you aren't in our Discord, we have a free Discord. Um, Hound has been putting in a ton of work over there. I think he actually changed his name, but he's been putting in a ton of work over there. He's phenomenal. So go check that out. Let me know what you guys think, and I hope to see you in the next video.